Hey everyone! This week I had someone ask me, where the heck do we start with an agile organizational transformation? Um, which is kind of a big question. And I thought what would be really helpful is uh, I, I would share with you today six principles um, by which we design more agile, more responsive organizations. Um, and then over the next six weeks, I'll go into each of these aspects in a little more detail for you. So I thought that could be really fun. Um, the, so the answer I gave this particular person was, as they would well understand, there is no answer. Uh, so classic consulting move, right? Uh, but the reality is that when we're talking about agile transformation, when we're talking about responsive organizations, when we're talking about this transformation that is so much more than digital, uh, the, the truth is that there is no answer. What we're actually trying to do is, is to get away from that mentality of I've seen somebody who's got an answer and I'm going to cut and paste that into my organization and assume that I'll get a result because they had a good result. And we're actually trying to get to how do we design from first principles. So when we're talking about setting up a successful transformation or, or a successful uh, organizational redesign, uh, when we're talking about reinventing organizations, what we want to do is get back to first principles. And so I thought I'd share with you six principles that I use to help redesign organizations and, uh, and that that might give you a little bit of insight as to some of those core values, some of those core beliefs that we're coming back to, so that as we start to make decisions about putting teams together, about the way we structure the organization, about the way we make decisions, about the way that we structure work, you can understand some of those fundamental underlying principles um, that have helped us to evolve the solution that you see on the surface. So by that, what I mean is that it's more about understanding, for example, the principles around the Agile Manifesto and then working out what that really looks like for you and your organization as opposed to saying, well, we have people doing a daily stand-up and a fortnightly reflection exercise and, and showcase, and, and therefore we're agile. Um, and and so, so this is what this post is about, is really this episode is wanting to get to what are the core principles that we use to design by. Because if we are in the space of looking for continual improvement, continually measuring, continually, continually pivoting, and, uh, and seeking to respond and change the way that we're operating, you've got to do that from the basis of first principles, from those core beliefs, and then design from there, rather than simply picking and choosing a whole bunch of different things and kind of throwing it together and ending up with a really fragmented way of operating. You've got to have those core principles that tie it all together, right? So here's the six. First up, the first, the first principle is that we want to look from the outside in. So that is looking from a customer's perspective rather than the way that we think about our organization and internally what it means to, uh, to structure and to, and to deliver for customers. What does it look like from the customer's perspective looking outside in and end to end? So we're looking for a holistic way of approaching problems. We're looking to try and understand how does a customer navigate all the way through our organization to get what it is that they need. Historically, a customer has had to come in and navigate through a product group, um, probably through some IT and finance bits, there's a whole bunch of HR staff. Um, we've got to navigate through all of these different business units end to end to get what it is that they want. Um, what we want to start to do is to, to flip that and say from a customer's perspective what's needed, and then let's line everything that we do up behind what it is that our customers want. So that's that first principle about looking from the outside in end to end from a customer's perspective. The second principle is that we want to start to embrace variation and variability. All too often in business we have this idea that we want to standardize and make consistent and, 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 and what ends up happening is we shoehorn people into a process or a way of working. Um, that means that it's not necessarily fit for purpose. And what happens is that we actually just institutionalize rule breaking and people start going around the process to get done what they need to get done for a customer's perspective for their own internal motivators. So embracing variation is about understanding what is it that our customers are asking for regularly, what is predictable, what is stable, let's build to that. And then what do we do with all the other stuff that's those outliers, that long tail stuff, what do we do with that? We need to build an approach and a capability within our own organization to handle that 
without trying to build the entire system to handle every single possible occurrence. So embracing variation is a, is a whole bunch of themes around understanding what's predictable and stable, building the core of our organization around that, cementing that in through our IT and our architecture and our processes, and at the same time having that flexibility and that responsiveness to get together a group of people when we get one that's not one of what those predictable things are. And how do we handle that? So that's the second principle is around embracing variation. Third principle, one of my personal faves, uh, improving the work and doing the work is the work. So all too often we have a job role or a job description and we have people going out and doing work and then when something comes up, when we see a problem, it's kind of the job of the people back in head office to figure out what that problem is and to come up with a solution for it and then to go and implement that change program, roll it out, and it kind of gets dumped on everybody on the front line. We want to flip that dynamic. So what we want to get to is a place where everybody in the organization has that capability to diagnose problems, to see problems, to uh, problem solve across the organization. They have that autonomy to be able to go and do that and they have the networks and the skill sets and the capability available to know how to solve those problems. And that actually that improvement starts to be driven from across the organization rather than somebody sitting in a back office far away from customers, far away from work, having a brilliant idea, and then uh, rolling that out across the organization. So that's the third principle is around being able to uh, add and improve and change the work that's happening on the front line. It's, it's about distributing that decision-making power down to people who are closest to the risk, they're closest to the opportunity, they have the understanding, and actually building an organization that's able to handle that uh, and that's able to enhance this, this responsiveness that comes from people that are out in the work making change as opposed to all of that change having to be funneled through into um, the bottleneck of executive decision makers to get permission before we go and do anything different to what we're doing today. Uh, and, and it's about embracing that culture of change too. So that's principle number three. Principle number four, change performance incentives. <laughs> so whether these are formal incentives or informal incentives, what the things that leaders pay attention to matter. And the things that leaders pay attention to and, and the things that we measure and the things that we put in people's performance uh, reports and their development plans all of those measures are going to start to drive some really strange behavior in our organization, particularly when we start putting targets around it. Uh, when I get to that point, I'm going to share a really cool story with you that was I personally had some experience with of somebody who was in a role. They were able to hit every single performance measure that had been laid out in front of them, and the experience for the customer was absolutely appalling. So through, through the best of intentions and through no fault of our own, we set up these performance incentives, we set up these targets, um, and that drives really strange behavior in our organization. Um, it's the catalyst behind that infighting and that competition between business units, which just tears down our organization, as opposed to an approach that's around aligning performance incentives, aligning those KPIs and those measures in a way that brings the organization together. So principle number four is that we, we need to change performance incentives. We need to start to look at the behavior that it's driving in our organization, start to unpick some of that stuff that can be really, really detrimental to the way that we operate and the way we deliver for customers. Principle number five, shift the philosophy of measurement. Uh, and so what I mean by this is that Often in our organizations, in fact, I'm going to say, I'm going to say blanket rule and say this happens everywhere. We have this, we have this belief that we need to measure to understand achievement. So that plays out as, um, did you hit the number? If not, why not? And we need to shift that philosophy of measurement from measure to achieve. Did you hit the number? If not, why not? To measure to understand where to go next for improvement. This is really critical because at its core, what we're saying is that it's okay if the measure goes the wrong way, if as a result, we have learned something. And I've got a really great example to share there of, um, of a leader who had a significant change in performance um, and a significant shift in what he was measuring. And, and, and as a result, 
um, what he did and the actions that he took, having seen that change in the measure. And it was a little bit unexpected. It's not what you what you might have thought. So this this idea of getting away from simply did we hit the budget? Did we hit the sales target? Uh, getting away from that sort of stuff into did we deliver what matters for customers? And and if not, why not? And how do we get better at doing that? Is that philosophy philosophical shift at its core around what are we measuring, why are we measuring, and it actually makes the shift from lagging measures into leading performance indicators way easier once you get your head around the mindset shift that needs to go with it, the philosophical shift around how we think about measurement. That's principle number five. And then finally, principle number six, change financial practices. Uh, In many of the organizations that I've worked, Finance is a huge driving factor around the way that people operate in an organization, the way that decisions get made. It's all closely tied to the investment that we make as a business. We need to change those financial practices because at the moment, in most organizations, they're set up in a way that is about uh, managing and de-risking. And that's great, except that often the methods that we've got don't actually help us de-risk. And we need to change the way that we are making investment decisions, the practices that we have about how we measure money. All of those things need to change to support this culture of experimentation and test and learn and continuous improvement. Um, That's that's just almost a given in every organization that I've worked in. And so um, putting it into this category of actually it's a core principle to say that we've got to change measures, we've also got to change financial practices, that's at the core of how we start to evolve. But it's not quite as scary as you might think. So that's it. Those are the six principles. Step one, principle number one, you must look outside and end to end from a customer's perspective. Principle number two, we must learn to embrace variability and variation in what we do whilst understanding what's predictable and not falling into the trap of personalization. Principle number three, improving the work is part of doing the work. We're not simply asking people to be robots out there doing a job. We're asking them to use their brains to think and to improve the systems and the processes that we have in place as we do the work. Principle number four, we must change performance incentives. Whether they are formalized through your performance uh, process, your development plans, whether they're informal measures that are maybe not written down on paper, but we know they're things that people pay attention to. We must start to look at what those measures are, change them to be uh, more effective in enhancing the work practices that we're looking at. Principle number five, we must shift the philosophy of measurement from did we achieve the number, did we hit that number, if not, why not, to we measure to understand where to go next for improvement. And finally, principle number six, we've got to change the conventional financial practices that we have to enable our new way of working around experimentation, test and learn. So that's it from me this week. Um, Keep an eye out over the next six weeks. I'll dive into each of those principles in a little bit more detail. Uh, Hit me up with any questions you might have. I'd love a comment, love a share. Uh, Reply to me on email, whatever sort of floats your boat. And I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day. Uh, We'll see you again very, very soon. Thanks.